Welcome to Electron Line. Now we move forward almost 2,000 years since the day of the, the Greeks. And now we get into what we call the giants of astronomy. And so there's six individuals who made a tremendous difference in our understanding of modern astronomy. Of course, when we say modern astronomy, we don't want to compare it to the latest technologies in the Hubble telescope and so forth, but just a basic understanding of where the Earth stands in terms of the universe, at least in the realm of our solar system. And so here we have Copernicus, who was born in 1473, who started out with some revolutionary ideas. Not that those ideas maybe have been thought about and have been observed by others, but he was able to very eloquently put that in words in a way that really solidly explained what the solar system looked like and the relative position of the sun and the earth. We also have Galileo, who came up with some amazing uh, discoveries, Tycho Brahe, Kepler, Newton, and finally Einstein. And they really had these tremendous contributions to astronomy. So let's see what Copernicus brought to the table. Well, he was born in 1473, and he died in 1543. So he lived 70 years, which back in those days was a very nice and long life. He lived in Poland. He was educated in Italy. And so these were the seven statements that he made. He wrote them down. And for once, since then, it was very well defined what he thought as a scientist was happening in our solar system. First of all, he claimed that there was no one center. Remember that in those days, everybody believed that the Earth was at the center. There was just one center universe and the Earth was right there in the middle of it. Everything else revolved around the Earth, including the Sun. At least that was the thought of the day. And by almost everybody, that was the accepted way. Now here he came along, Copernicus came along, and he said, no, there's no one center, there's multiple centers. And he said that the Earth is not the center of everything, the Earth is only at the center of the moon. Wow, that was a tremendous statement. So that means there's just not one center of the universe, there's more than one center, and for the Earth there's only one object that's revolving around the Earth. It is the moon and nothing else. The sun doesn't revolve around the, uh, the Earth. And so, instead of just saying it like that, he just made some very, very basic statements. He said, there's not one center. There's more than one. Wow, that was a revolutionary idea. And then he said that the Earth is the center of the moon and only of the moon and nothing else. Wow. So he left everything else aside. He just went very systematically and says, this I know because that's what I observed. And this I know, that's because I observed that. So the third statement he made, he said, all the spheres, and when he talks about the spheres, he talks about the planets. He said, all the spheres revolve around the sun. Wow. So, those spheres, the things that we see that were called Mercury and Mars, and uh, Venus and Jupiter and Saturn, those things, those spheres, they don't revolve around the Earth, they revolve around the sun. Wow. That is strange because we always thought that they, everything revolved around the Earth. It's not the case. He said that the sun is at the center of those spheres. So here we have one center, the Earth, which is the center of the Moon, and the Sun, which is the center of the spheres, the planets. Then he said that the distance between the Earth and the Sun, the Earth-Sun distance, is very small, very small, compared to the distance to the firmament. And the firmament was that sphere imagined in space where all the stars were at. So the distance to the stars, he said, was much, much greater than the distance between the Earth and the Sun. And from the Greek days, we already had some sort of idea how far it was to the Sun, and we were trying to make more and more measurements, try to get that in a more accurate way. But nevertheless, no matter how far we thought it was to the Sun, it was very small compared to the distance to the stars. Then he said that the motion of the firmament, because every night we go out and we see the stars move across the sky, and we go out from day to day, week to week, month to month, we know that the stars and the constellations appear in different portions of the sky at different times of the night and different times of the year. He said that all that motion, the motion of the firmament, is simply due to the motion of the Earth, nothing else. The firmament isn't moving around the Earth, it simply looks like it's moving because the Earth is moving. And then he said that the sun's motion due to the Earth's, is also due to the Earth's motion. The idea that the sun revolved around the Earth, that rose in the east, sets in the west, that wasn't, due, that wasn't because the sun was moving, that was because the Earth was moving. It was some motion that the Earth had that caused the sun to look like it's moving, so the sun's motion is due to the Earth's motion. And then he concluded the Earth, therefore, has two motions. 
two motions because on any given day everything seems to revolve around the earth that's because of one type of motion and then things would, would change the position of the firmament would change from day to day from week to week from month to month and that was due to an other motion of the earth and so finally he then also said that the retrograde motion the motion that no one could ever explain and so they came up with the theory of the deferred and the epicycles he said we don't need deferred and epicycles we understand now that the retrograde motion of the planets is only due to the Earth's motion. The relative position of the Earth, the Sun, and the planets, if you observe them, if you do the geometry and you connect them with lines, you then realize that from our perspective, it looks like sometimes the planets will move in one direction and sometimes the planets will move in the opposite direction. Simply, the op our observations, and it's due to the Earth's motion, not because of anything else. Wow, what a solid seven statement that he made. He firmly said that because of this, I can confidently say that the Earth is not at the center of the universe, that the Earth is simply the center of the moon, and that the sun is at the center of the spheres, the planets. And that the firmament only appears to move because the Earth moves. And not just that the Earth moves, but the Earth has two motions, not just one. Wow. He said it straight. He set the record straight, but of course it was not accepted by almost anybody in the in the world also almost everybody said this is not true this is not the case we can see it differently but then nobody made them these careful measurements observations that copernicus did the power of observation the power of reasoning unbiased reasoning is tremendous and this was the result of that